Well, I wonder if you. Well, we're, 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 we're open Coppinger. for membership at the Deputy, moment. Excuse I, 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 I'll pass the sheet along. Me. Deputy Coppinger, please don't provoke him. <laughs> <laughs> Deputy Durkin. I, I want to. I want. I want to say that I agree almost entirely. It's with the, the resolution. I disagree. And if, if, you know, this is this is where this is where we we, 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 we can go, do something and have, have a lot in common. You'll also be equally shocked, you know, Chairman, that I have quite a number of constituents living in Turnstone who come to me on a regular basis and Ongar and various other places. So. I have, I like, a lot, like everybody else here, I'm sure, uh, we have a general knowledge of the situation. I agree, in fact, that the answer to the problem is not to put people who are in houses out on the roadside. That is something that we cannot afford to allow to happen as a society without doing serious damage to our society. So let's look at who should pick up the tab. There's not much sense in the local authority deciding to buy houses that are already full with tenants or people in them. So because they're not adding to the, to, to the housing stock at all. They're buying, they're, buying in, they're buying property that somebody else owned previously and relieving them of the responsibility. And it costs the state in, in any event. I don't see any reason at all why the, the, the borrower, or the, sorry, the lender, the um, 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 investor in this particular situation, for whatever reason they purchase the properties, of having to take responsibility for ensuring that the people do not have the rents raised dramatically and unfortunately over a, in a short space of time, and that they wait their turn until such time as it is possible to make the provision that is required for the people concerned. And I have come across this in my own constituency and in neighbouring constituencies. I know that we all around this table have, have, have done so. So I would I have the, the, the strong belief that the venture capitalist, uh, who incidentally has two options of investing in a bank for which he will receive 1% or a half percent, or investing in property for which he might achieve a 10% uh, increment or, uh, on an annual basis, or even a 20%, or in some cases during the boom, a 4 or 500%. So I think, I think that it is crucially important that we all agree to that. There is no situation that we can countenance the creation of, of the situation of homelessness for whatever economic reason, because that's our responsibility as, as, as public representatives. The other thing which I think is important, and I think uh, Debbie Coppinger referred to this as well, I th think we need to, uh, to, to empathise with this as well. It's, a house is not just a house and standing free by itself. That's not the entirety of what is required. There is the community and the, the, the space of recreation that goes with it. And, and Deputy Carpenter is right. There was a, a lack of emphasis on those issues during the boom. That's correct. But not all of us agreed with that. A lot of us strongly objected to the fact that there was a concentration of, of high-density uh, uh, development that left very little other than a place to sleep at night in a very confined space and over and under, uh, which we've talked about in this committee over the last couple of weeks. And that is not a, 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 an acceptable place to put people to live, for a community to exist, to take their normal place in society. So I, I, I strongly agree with that. A again, I think that now is the time as development plans are taking place all over the country to, 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 to say to people who are on the local authorities, we're not on the local authorities anymore, but to say to people, look, you must provide the community facilities as well, because that's part of, of what li living is about. And the next part is, is, is the one of the management fees that was, has been referred to. You're absolutely right. The management fees are, are atrocious. I, I was a voice in the wilderness, certainly in certain parts of the country, when the appearance of management fees was regarded as a worthwhile proposition, two and three thousand management fees per year, when, when previously people were paying rates and having difficulty paying rates, and suddenly we had multiples of that. So the reality of it is this, is that we need to look now at what we are going to do about that and recognise that putting people in a worse situation than they have ever been before is not going to solve our housing problem. There's a last point, and that's the point about the, 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 if a person is homeless, are potentially homeless, are living in cramped and overcrowded conditions, and have special needs in the household. Now that's 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 a challenging position, and that has to be recognised. It is a most challenging situation to find oneself in that particular location at any given time, and the potential threat of being homeless adds more to it. And that's correct. You, what you say is absolutely true. You need to be close by where schools are. Where you, can, where you have already established a community, a community reliance 
and establish community support. So you need to be close to community facilities, including schools and including a local dispensary or well, hospital or, whatever, or, or uh, community care centre, whatever the case may be. So none of those issues that you have, that you have mentioned are new to us. We know about these. And yes, you're right, we do need to do something about them. And we need to do it in the short term. What I'm concerned about is the quick fix. And what I, what, what I am most concerned about at this stage is this, is that we, we try to ensure that venture capitalists recognise that they have a social responsibility. Remember that the banking system in this country didn't really do itself any great honour over a period of time, which resulted in eventually the situations like we're, we're talking about now. I believe that they have some moral responsibility in these matters as well. I don't expect them to hand over DOSH to us on an ongoing basis. There's nothing in life for free. There's nothing in this life for free. We have to recognise that. And I think you, all you good people know that too. But the point I want to emphasise is this. I don't wish to offer the, the, the people soft options. I think that we need to try to re ensure that investors of that kind and that type and with that intention recognise that we expect them to display their social obligations of which they have many and I think now is their time to show it. Well, you, we, I, we, we deal with them on a one-to-one -one basis and it works. Thank you, Deputy. Um, I just want to comment myself and, um, on, two, on two or three points. Um, you very adequately set out the case, and I find myself in agreement with Deputy O'Brien, first of all, in saying that as a committee, we're not looking at Tyrrellstown in isolation as it being the public face of a potential problem. And you yourself referred to that in your opening presentation. I think that's important. And all the previous speakers have spoken about you know, the difficulties and whatever, um, and including Deputy Durkin. But I just want to pick up on, on one point you made, Deputy Durkin, and I'm in slight disagreement with you on this, and I, I don't mean to be controversial in any way, but you talk about you know, the moral and social responsibility of the venture capital funds. And I suppose from my view, and as a committee's point of view, we can't trust in that. We need to make a recommendation that ensures the, a, res, a satisfactory responsibility is delivered. There, there has to be a degree of certainty. And the recommendation, I'm not disagreeing that they shouldn't have it, but the committee's recommendation has to be a recommendation but, that carries some substance but, to ensure that that responsibility chairman, is delivered. Yes. If we are seen to cave in to that, I'm, if we are seen to go moving away from the pressure, the pressure created by the venture capitalists, then we have lost before we start. And I, I would strongly urge that we keep that in mind. I, I, would, I would reiterate, and I did it I, I, knowingly, I, I, know, I, know, I know what people will say at that. I expect, I would expect venture capitalists in that, those sorts of circumstances to recognise that they've bought a property under whatever conditions they bought it, that there are people in situ already, and that those people have an expectation of remaining in situ for some considerable time, or until such time as the state or other agencies have time to resolve the problem. I, I, I want to emphasise, we may disagree on it, no. but I can assure you, I sat across the table from those same venture capitalists that you're talking about. I'm not disagreeing and with you. And we had a sharp exchange. I'm not disagreeing with you, Deputy, but I'm saying the, re the, the responsibility for the committee isn't just to rely on that, that we come forward with a re recommendation to ensure that that happens. As That's well. the, the, the difference I'm making. That you know, uh, you talk about their, their moral and social responsibilities, and they may well have them. But our recommendations have to be a bit more binding than depending on those responsibilities. That's the point I was trying to make. Can I just clarify one thing. It, people might not understand. The developer who built these houses owns them. The crash came. He couldn't sell them. Right. So. If the state was to buy them, I don't see about caving in, and actually it would add to the housing stock, and I'll tell you why. At least half of the people are on the council's housing list anyway, and could become council tenants, right? Um, but also, for the council used to do affordable housing. To me, actually, that's very important because there's a lot of people who don't qualify for council housing whose incomes are too high. Or but they're to rent or yeah. Okay, so if you take the estate that I live in, which is up the road, there was 400 affordable houses, all built by the council, and 100 social council tenants. So um, all mixed in together works perfectly well. But my point is, it would be no different if the council bought these 100 houses. It would operate and it would benefit from the mortgages people would pay. 
but it would also have a number of people off its list. Thank you. I believe the responsibility, and I want to get back to this again. Goldman I, Sachs don't I, have I, any responsibility. Well, I, I, can I assure you, I can assure you that it is time for us to make them recognise that they do have responsibility. Colleagues, look, there will be a forum for us to deal with this. We have witnesses here. Uh, that will be a separate issue. Deputy Durkin. Or, sorry, Deputy O'Brien. Sorry, that was a big mistake. Deputy O'Brien. It <laughs> comes out worse from that, uh, that mistake. Just briefly, because I do want yeah, to go back. And it just, I mean, again, it, it, it's to go back to the, the, the presentation. It's not that there's a simple choice between we call on the banks to do something, or that, in this case, the investment funds, or the state picks up the full tab. There are a range of options that I think are available. Um, and the difficulty with Deputy Durkin's point is Minister Noonan won't agree to the kind of legislation that would be required, just we know, because he's already said it on the record, to make those short-term investment funds or vulture funds do what we would like them to do. But there are other solutions that are available. Um, and they're somewhere in the region of what Ruth is talking about, and there are some other options there. And I just think we need, we need to pursue that path. Proposal, and, and as I say, yeah. the committee has agreed to seek that correspondence to have it when the minister appears here in front of us. Deputy Byrne, did I you want to get my proposal when the minister's here too, Chairman? <coughs> you had several proposals. <laughs> my proposal is when the minister's here too, and I'll be reinforcing it then. And you'll be more than welcome. Uh, Deputy uh, Catherine Byrne, did you wish to. I do, yes. Sorry. First of all, I have to apologise to you. I had to leave. I just saw just something happened there that I had no control over. Um, I've heard a little bit of your presentation outside as well. This is a very complex case, and um, Deputy Coppinger said that there was a survey done and that two thirds of the people in the survey were working and one thirds were a men's supplement. Do you know how many units were surveyed? Was there 40, 100, 200 for that survey? Have you any idea? I think it's over. Oh, got an eviction notice. So 40. 40. 40. Okay, right. Um, there's no simple solution to this. You've already heard different views as it is. But I do think it is beholden on this committee. I do think it is beholden on this committee to look and explore whatever options there can be, because we don't have the answers here. Well, I certainly don't. Uh, there's other people who are involved in this who may be able to guide us on what options there are, and I think we have to look at all of them, and we have to try and facilitate people who have been living like yourself in rented accommodation and now find themselves that they're basically waiting to be put out of their homes. And although I didn't see uh, your presentation, sorry, what's your name? Gillian, I know by looking at you that you're under an awful lot of stress. I can see that in you. And anybody who's a lot of, particularly young children, and living in, in, in a home at them where they've settled and they're going to school and they're involved in the community, want to remain there. So look, I'd like to say I sympathise, which, which I do, and it's not being, I'm not being uh, bad at saying that. I really believe that there is, we do, we do as a committee have to explore options, but it's not up to us today to make those options, but I really believe that there can be options and they can be found because there's nothing, nothing lost on this. There's only things to be gained if we work and try. But you're only one of probably a lot of, a lot of people who are going to come down the lines over the next couple of years. But you're as important as the rest of the 100 people or more that are involved in this. So certainly as a committee member, when we explore the options, I certainly will be very open to a viable option keep people in their homes. Thank you, Deputy Byrne. I've one, I've one final uh, contribution uh, from this side, and then it's all back to yourselves. Uh, I Deputy... I the, the witnesses, I think they make a very compelling case, particularly for the community they've built and the lives they have chosen there and the success of that. Uh, <coughs> just the issues, I just, uh, I just want to try and get this clear in my head. Um, Notwithstanding the fact, whoever buys a house, right, and who rents it, whoever they are, whether they be vulture funds or a TD or a senator or a business person, no matter if they put a tenant in there, as I understand it, provided they say that they're going to sell the house, whatever contract you have in terms of time ends and you have a three-month notice and you must get out. It's not the kernel of the issue, really. Uh, and that's what I think the problem is. So in other words, wh while you might have a guarantee, provided your landlord doesn't sell the house, not to have a rent review for two years uh, uh, since your last, since your rent review prior to that, the question is that you don't have, uh, if he's selling or he, if the company or the people are selling the house, that's the problem. 
and that's what puts the pressure on you and other people in your estate who might have had a different time in terms of the length of their tenancies commencing or ending, then it, it hits all of them. But it also hits the 300,000 people who are renting in this state. So it's an issue, I think, across the board. But specifically the vulture funds, I think, and uh, I think I'll do that in a second. So I think there's a deeper issue here that's not just, it's for whoever the landlord is. Uh, how do you create a situation where effectively the tenants are, can't stay? Now, they notice that they can't, you, what we were saying is that they can't sell the house for a period, a given or a stated period of time, uh, to give a longer term security uh, to the tenants who are there. And as uh, Deputy Dorkin said, if you had such a situation until you had, uh, you know, that you'd have a help to buy scheme or you'd have all of the other strategies would come into place. In other words, if, if, you, if you said, no, in fact, you might want to sell, you could really, you see, I don't know if you can do this legally, that you can't sell until we come up with the solutions to this problem. Each solution being different, if you can, if you can afford more, if you're lucky enough to afford the mortgage, that's one thing. If you become, if you have the capacity only, like if you're on social welfare, you have a different capacity. So I think it's, it's a bit deeper, notwithstanding the points that have been made. But to take up the point, could we invite in some of these vulture funds people? You know, just to see, look, ask Mr. Goldman Sachs and Co. You know, well, let's call him that, call him a personality rather than a uh, Well, why don't we ask these people in here and say, okay, come in here and tell us, you explain to us, you know, what, what's a solution for you? And I would go back to, uh, to, to Minister Noonan when he said here, and I, and I think when he was asked about this, uh, he said, if I'm correct, that, that, that there was one thing about these funding agencies, the vulture funds, that they actually may be, may be in a position to do a better deal than the person they bought the properties from because they've got a bigger discount in, in the price. And, and that's an issue that I think we could go after. So in other words, uh, so it's slightly more complex, I think. So I don't know, I'm not disagreeing with anybody here. I support the objective which you want is to stay in your home, full stop, and that you don't leave there unless and until you're happy to go, and the stability of your life is guaranteed in as much as it can be uh, by whatever process we can put in place to help that. But at the end of the day, we can't stop everybody from selling the houses if they're landlords. And I suppose that's the... The government can buy them. I know the government can buy them, but it can't buy 300,000. There are a number of points... So you... if I can propose that, if, if it's an order. But Sorry, I think it's very, Chair, very... just clarify, yeah. the government is buying houses in Tyrrellstown every single day. Sure. The, the council's going up buying houses and housing yeah. council tenants That's in that right. area all the time. So, well, that, yeah. so like, now it has a chance okay. to buy more. Okay. Okay. No, I've, no, okay. I've, I've no issue with that at all. What I'm saying is we can't buy the three hundred thousand. Look, a number of points you've, you've clearly you've clearly identified that the issue is complex and there's more than one issue. And I suppose you talk then about the rights of people to sell or not. And it is unusual in the residential property market that units are sold with vacant possession. If you're selling a commercial unit and you have a rent roll, it's the rent roll that normally dictates the selling price. And that's a piece of work for the committee to look at in, you know, in our deliberations, and, and you rightly say that. At this stage of the proceedings, I want to hand back to the residents in any order, any of you who want to speak on any of the points. Most of us have taken this case to the PLTB. We have challenged the eviction letter and almost six of us has found out the eviction letter is invalid and uh, the landlord has breached a lot of contr a contract not to fix the house. So we are taking this to just to buy a time for the government to come in. These are 40 families. This is not about tenants. We are one community. If you know Terrestan very well, everybody are one. So we're just appealing to the community today we are grateful for inviting us in today to present our case. We want you to look into it. Almost 90% of the 40 families are working. We only have a very low number on those on housing allowance. So we are appealing today for us to come up to it an affordable mortgage to keep us in our community, in our homes, where we belong, so we can move, off, move on with our life and carry on with our jobs that we do in our community. Thank you very much. Could, Please, yes. Like, could the buy-in from the developer, the people within the house, can they buy in from the developer? There's only one thing that's stopping them from not buying. Like, they're going to pay 1500 back a month in mortgage or in rent. 
So if there was some plasma agreement to come up maybe with the bank and the developer that they could buy them, after, in saying that some of the houses down there cost 550,000, but I don't know what they're, is it 200 and something thousand now? So could they, instead of the venture funds buying them, could the residents, the people that's working and, and, and the council, could, afford to, could they buy them off the developer for the standard price, the, the rate that they're going at? And the approval is the problem. Yeah, most of us. Yeah, the banks would have to the mortgage, say for the mortgage, they wouldn't have a deposit, like, and they wouldn't have. No. Yeah. Could, could it be something that you could look into with the banks? Yeah. To, to, to be helpful, we don't know that, but I think some of those proposals that Deputy O'Brien referred to in terms of the, the housing agency may have been proposals, and we will try and see those. Um, yeah, most of us are not mortgage approvers. Like you see, we are paying a very high rent. I'm paying 1450 for a three-bedroom house. It is difficult for me to save up for a deposit. You are looking That's around 20 to 30,000 euro. With my husband, a taxi driver, I'm a care assistant. So all the money we make, we're giving it back to the landlord. So we have nothing left. So that is what we're appealing today, for them to look into this proposal to find a solution. And again, they should look into the, the rate of the house. The, the, the landlord have too many power over the tenant. They should look into to keep the tenants in their house, not a landlord waking up and telling you, I'm giving you a mass, mass eviction, throwing people on the street. This is 40 people. We don't know who is going to be next next year. So we are appealing today that you people should look into our proposal, the committee, the housing minister, and all the TDs to come to our rescue before we end up in the street. We have 265 families already in Dublin 15 in the homeless shelter how many more are going you're looking around 200 children with family going by the end of the year so we are we are, we are appealing here to do some we need a solution quick and fast please thank you, thank very, you much. very much yeah, okay. well, i am one of the people that is getting rent allowance and there's not only that but there is another family that has a child with autism as well and she is under so much stress as well but there is not a lot of us on there that is getting rent allowance. And we would like to just, you know, keep paying the rest, stay in our home. And we just want the community to stay together. We don't want to leave the community. We'd want it to keep it as one as what it has been. Her house is 1300 and she is topping up with 1400. Mine is 1450 and it's three bedroom. And she is topping up with over 300 euro every month. So it is very difficult for people like that. I'm only working part-time, my husband is working food, and we're struggling. But this is somebody that is not working at all. So the government to look into all this and find a solution to every one of us. And I believe there's apartments in the village as well, the local village where the shop is, the pubs is closed down, and the, 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 what do you call it, is closed down. It. But I believe that's up for, is going up for sale, it's under NAMA. That's going for sale as well. So it is, now there's apartments above them shops, and there's families living in them apartments as well. Like, you, I, 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 I think it's, I don't know, it's 60 apartments or far, I'm not 100% I'm not sure, like, but you get two kids, like, to them, each of them, like, it's, 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 it's 60, it's 120 kids. One parent or two parents, like, it's 120 parents. Do you know what I mean? Like, like something, as I said to you, like, I'd like to, for maybe if it would just come out someday and just, View the area with myself and, 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 and Gillian and Funk here. Just view the area, just walk around the area and just have a look at the area. And then maybe you could understand exactly what we're talking about and what we're saying. Like we're not exaggerating it and we're not. So I'll, I'll just put the invitation there to you. Sure, we we can get some. I'll, I'll, if, if members wanted to travel out, we can arrange that, yes. At this stage, um, we conclude the meeting. I'd like to thank the residents uh, for your attendance here today, the submission, and, and I suppose to be fair, you know, difficult to come and make the presentation, but you did very well. You made us fully understand the situation that you're facing, and we understand it clearly. Uh, and, of course, your written submission, that will be on the, the website, but the points you made in it are very valid. That uh, concludes the meeting for today. And we adjourn until uh, Tuesday next week. Thank you very much.